What's up guys, T here. For today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that's been posed to me quite a bit, and that's what kind of divisions would I recommend for multiplayer play? So what I've got here is quite a few divisions that I've come up with through my own experience as well as through some uh, multiplayer, re or not multiplayer, excuse me, online research, looking at other people's um, you know, preferences, other people's experiences, and kind of taking account for all that. And so what I've come up with is a bunch of divisions here for all different aspects of the game and different parts of the game that you can use. And a lot of them are going to be kind of more specialist as we get into the later. And so don't use all of them at any given time. You're going to have to adapt and choose which ones you want to use to use that kind of equipment. So with that in mind, let's kind of start getting into it. I think that's all I wanted to lay out to start with. So the first thing I got for you guys right in front of me here is just your generic infantry. And a lot of you guys are going to recognize this if you have some uh, HOI4 uh, experience. And that's just your 7, two, seven infantry, 2 artillery. And this is going to be, for a lot of people, this is the standard um, infantry division for multiplayer play because it is quite powerful, the balance between defense and soft attack here. And so the first thing I want to point out to modify this that you can do a little bit is if you use the commander that has 10% less combat width, you can actually go in here and throw in an 8th infantry uh, company and that's going to give you a little bit extra defensive value and because of that you're going to be able to sometimes catch people off guard. They're going to be like, why is there this extra defense? It might give you a slight edge if you have that commander available to you. Certain countries have that commander available more than others and um, that's just something to keep an eye on and use to your advantage because that 10% combat width can really really help you out as far as having stronger divisions than you'd normally be allowed to. Another thing to consider when you're building this division is if you're going to be facing a lot of tanks or the potential to face tanks is what you can do instead of putting on the 8th guy here you can actually go over and put in some anti-tank uh, and then you're still gonna have that combat width um, so you're gonna have that line anti-tank. If you don't have the 10% combat width modifier commander available to you or if you just don't want to use him what you can do is just use the support company anti-tank um, this guy right here and what you're gonna want to do is actually use it instead of this one and so that brings me to my support companies and what I wanted to point out actually I want to point out this a little earlier but this is a good time anyways uh, the support companies when you see them on my left here they are always going to be organized from priority so the first one you see listed is the one I'd recommend adding first and so on and so forth based on need and as well as uh, obviously resource requirements since each one's going to require a certain amount of support equipment and support equipment is really not the easiest thing to produce early game so just keep that in mind that these are based on priority as you go so most second and then all the way down to the least for the anti-tank I would put this up to second Alright guys, so now I want to show you two modifications for your infantry template. These are going to be late game modifications. And what they're focusing on is a combat width of 44. So you're going to have to be using the 10% combat width modifier commander in order to use these divisions. If you're not going to be using him, don't even go for these 40 width uh, things. Just stick with the generic. It'll work better with you as far as the composition of the division being as effective as possible. So you can take advantage of these if you're going to use that commander. And what I got set up right now is the offensive minded one. I also have a defensive minded one to show you, but first we're going to start with the offensive and this is going to be consistent of 13 infantry, 5 artillery, and 1 heavy tank. So the 13 infantry is going to be, you know, their base need, the organization, the defense, the hit points. The artillery is going to be your soft attack and your heavy tank is going to bring in an armor value for you as well as your piercing. Basically it's going to function as your anti-tank. And what this will do for you is it's going to give you a piercing value that's going to be unpierceable by infantry at the current tier as well as it's going to give you extra artillery to use for soft attack against enemy infantry and it's also going to give you a piercing value to be equivalent enough to pierce enemy tanks and other hard targets. So what this division is going to do for you is it's going to have one less infantry than double of the generic template it's going to have one more artillery than double the generic template but it's also going to have the heavy tank and that's where a huge difference comes in because the heavy tank like the numbers right now are really screwy because this is just the 1936 variants but when you look at the 1941 variant heavy tank you're going to have armor values that aren't pierceable by infantry unless they're including some kind of tank or um, anti-tank into their division as well as you're going to be have enough piercing to pierce any kind of armored hard target divisions that the enemy is going to throw at you because the heavy tanks are quite powerful. Yes they're expensive but to put one in with your infantry template it's quite worth it and this is going to be a balanced offensive minded 
uh, infantry division template so you're gonna want to go with this if you are winning the war at this point you can move up to this template and really drive home your point now the flip side is what I'm gonna cut to here in one second and this is your defensive focused combat with 44 uh, infantry template and what it consists of is 17 infantry 3 artillery and 1 anti-tank so what you're ending up with is 3 more infantry than double the generic template um, you're ending up with 1 less artillery as a result of that but you're also still squeaking in that anti-tank to defend against your enemy's tanks. If you find that the enemy is using heavy tanks or tanks that you think the anti-tank won't be able to penetrate, what you can do is actually use the 1941 model uh, tank destroyer for the medium tank. And that's going to still be only one combat width and you can use that and it's going to have better piercing value than the line infantry anti-tank here. Alright, so now let's move on to a tank division. and. What I'd recommend for a basic tank division is four tanks, two motorized. So obviously early game it's going to be light tanks. Move, moving into uh, medium game, well listen to me, medium game, uh, mid-war uh, time period, you get what I'm saying. Um, you're going to be using your medium tanks and if you do feel lucky uh, you can move to heavy tanks but most likely 99.9% .9 of people are going to stop at medium tanks because heavy tanks are so darn expensive to produce and there's not that much of a gain to it um, they are considerably better at piercing and armor which makes them a lot more indestructible but as far as actual attack values and values versus infantry there's not too much of a difference as you move forward what your tank division is going to progress into is that you're going to add in an additional motorized company and then you're going to also add in some artillery mechanized artillery and what that's going to do is it's going to give you additional soft attack while still preserving your armor values and increasing your organization so as far as combination if you're using light tanks use light artillery if you're using medium tanks use medium artillery it's all about uh, composition based on speed because it only goes as fast as your slowest unit another upgrade you can make is you can turn all of these motorized infantry into mechanized infantry and the difference that makes is it increases their armor value as well as it's going to increase their defensive value um, and some other things but those are the two most notable changes and that's actually quite important for this composition of the division since you only have so many uh, infantry in here so that buff going to motorized to mechanize is going to make a pretty considerable difference for you and when you go to mechanize this is where I would first change to mechanized out of all the divisions so even if you have motorized infantry change this to mechanized before you do your motorized to mechanized you're gonna see more favorable uh, results here first than if you do the other way around and as far as when to do it what you're going to want to take a look at is again the composition of the division so if you're using light tanks and you're moving around at 12 maybe even 14 kilometers an hour you're not going to want to change right away most likely uh, to the mechanized because the first mechanized unit only moves at 8 kilometers an hour so if you switch you're going to lose that 4 to 6 kilometers an hour that your light tanks and SP artillery have available for you and you're going to lose that and that's really not good because speed is almost as important as an actual attack power in this game however if you're using medium armor at the time and medium artillery you're going to be able to switch over right away because the 1941 variant medium tank moves at 8 kilometers an hour which is the same speed as the 1941 mechanized infantry so you're going to be able to switch over right away and there's going to be no penalty you're just going to enjoy that advantage so that's something to keep in mind when choosing your tanks and choosing when to switch now if you want to use your tank division with the minus 10 percent combat with commander if you have like an extra one or something like that what you're going to want to do is use this setup here and this is just double of the 20 width I just showed you but you get to put in an extra light SP artillery and that's going to really increase your soft attack now as far as choosing whether or not to use this 44 width template or the ones I showed you with the infantry I would definitely recommend going with the infantry first because you're gonna see greater bonuses with them than what you're gonna see just adding in this light SP artillery here not to mention that you're gonna be have an easier time creating those 44 width templates because of the production costs are relatively much lower than what you're seeing here so just something to keep in mind um, it's there if you want to use it it does have an advantage but relatively the infantry would probably be a preferable to use uh, with the 44 width rather than this setup here so now we're starting to move into some of the more specialist divisions and these are going to have very uh, unique tailored uses 
that you're going to be mixing in to support your uh, uh, you know, infantry of the line, your tank of the line, those other two divisions I just showed you, those are going to be your main battle forces, but these are going to be where you can win or lose the war. These are going to be, if you use these effectively, you're going to swing the tide of battle, you're going to get an advantage. If you use them ineffectively, obviously, then you're wasting resources, things may go downhill from there. So, first of all, I'll show you here is a motorized division, and it's not going to be your typical uh, infantry division. What it is going to be is used to support your infantry, your tanks, whatever else, on the front line. And since they have that really fast 12 km an hour speed, what they're used is when you push an enemy back and they're retreating, you send this division up with the advancing army to overrun that infantry because their high speed is three times faster than a regular infantry. So you can use this to run down and overrun enemy infantry that's retreating even if it's just on the front line. It's really effective um, because any division you can pick off is one less division you have to fight, which means it's one more division uh, killed that you're closer to the enemy capital. And that can mean huge uh, dividends, every one you take. So that's what this is for. So what you got here is just your infantry for their speed. That's just going to keep straight up infantry to keep that speed up. Uh, easy to produce, 10 combat width, so it'll fit in real nice with your 20 combat width infantry or your 40 combat width infantry, either one. And then what you're going to have here is the recon company. It's going to give you an additional 10% speed across most terrains. And then follow it up, we're going to give them some support artillery so they can badger down some wounded infantry if they really need to as they're aggressing. And then just a re maintenance company uh, just to keep the trucks in line. Not totally necessary on the last one. If you're hurting for support equipment, don't bother with it uh, because motorized are relatively easy to produce. So for the support equipment, might not be worth it to have it in there. Uh, you make that call. I kind of laid out the pros and cons for you. You make that call. So now, I did lay out this as a truly specialist division. If you have the production, um, for all the same reasons why I was just talking about that speed, speed kills, uh, you can go ahead and actually use this as a true frontline division and all you're gonna do is up it to be just like your standard generic infantry division obviously we're gonna change the support companies too but basically it's just going to function exactly the same as your regular infantry except you're gonna be motorized and mechanized and will be moving three times faster than the opponent's leg infantry and for those reasons you are going to have a tremendous advantage as far as combat maneuvers you're going to be able to, like I said, overrun slow leg infantry. You're also going to have the option at certain points to break through and then encircle. Since you're moving so quickly, it's going to be hard to hard to react to you um, in a timely manner since you're moving three times as quickly. And that speed is just a tremendous advantage. So now I went ahead and moved in the support companies for you. Obviously, again, in order of preference. This is going to be mostly focused on your speed, uh, your entrenchment ability, so you can use them as a front defensive line. Uh, medics, obviously, maintenance company, duh, and then supply uh, logistics company. And logistics is something I really want to hit on for this template is the supply use is relatively high for your standard infantry template. Your infantry, the one we started with, has just about half of the supply use as this. So that's something really to keep in mind of. If you're fighting within Europe uh, or like some parts of the Soviet Union, like the Western Soviet Union, not going to have any issue with that you're going to have plenty of supply but if you move obviously in some of the more remote areas you're going to start to see some really issues with uh, bogged on supply and inefficient supply lines now if you want some anti-tank and you're wondering where your piercing is for this division well first i'm going to say if you're using this you probably have a relatively superior um, production advantage over your enemy so you might not be facing that many tanks but if you're still concerned about it what you're going to want to do is swap out the field hospital for an anti-tank support company because that way you're not affecting your speed since using the support company and if you don't like that you can use the combat with um, modifier and just stick in an anti-tank uh, tank destroyer is what I would use uh, light tank destroyer because it's going to keep up with that same speed and it's piercings better than the regular tank, anti-tank, or the uh, support company anyways. And then if you're really rolling with this, you can actually use this setup um, the same way as I use my offensive focus and defensive focus regular infantry. You can do that same thing with the motorized and uh, artillery, different things like that that I just set up here.
So just you know, copy those templates above and switch out infantry to motorized, artillery to SP artillery, and then the anti-tank to tank destroyer. And that's gonna get you set up just fine. Now again, the thing to keep in mind when you're upgrading, looking at upgrading these to um, mechanized infantry and then these to like a medium variant, uh, again, it's always just going to be that speed category. So if you move these to mechanized, we've already touched on this, but I'm going to say it again. The 1941 variant only goes 8, so you're losing 4 kilometers an hour. So that's only 66%, 67%, whatever you want to say, uh, of your speed that you're keeping. Um, and same thing if you go to medium, you're going to drop down to 8 kilometers an hour. So you're losing a lot of speed. What it's going to really come down to when you choose what to do with that is your one production capabilities and two what you want to do with speed. If you want to be fast, if you're okay with slowing down, because if you go down to eight, you're still double the leg infantry, which is still an advantage, um, and you get more combat power, but that's if you can produce it, because uh, they are going to have greater production needs. Both of those upgrades are more production intensive. So yeah, to sum it up, basically, you want to stay fast, stick with the light tanks, uh, the light SP artillery, and the motorized. That's going to stick you up to 12 until you get to the 1945 variant mechanized, then you can up to the mechanized here and then also you can obviously go up to the 1941 uh, SP artillery uh, if you want to slow down and have the extra punch and you have the production capability for it uh, go ahead and upgrade to mechanized immediately at the 1941 variant they're going to go eight kilometers and it's also going to match your upgraded medium artillery um, so they're both going to go eight and you're not going to have any issue with that uh, and then actually as you move forward the tank models actually mirror the increase in speed as the mechanized so you're gonna have that match up nicely for you as you progress down the uh, technology tiers moving on now we're gonna be getting right into the elite infantry so I'm talking paratroopers marines mountaineers those kinds of things what I recommend laying out for their division templates and obviously we're gonna be jumping right into paratroopers right away what their layouts going to consist of is eight paratroopers you're gonna get a combat width of 16 which fits right into the total width of 80 if you multiply it by five so you're gonna be able to have five divisions fighting in within one combat width uh, so the real important thing with these guys since they can't take any extra combat templates with them since it has to be para dropped um, is their support companies so first thing I'd always recommend is having support artillery so if you need to attack um, you're gonna have that ability to do it usually you're going to be jumping behind enemy lines securing a front line and then holding while you move in troops behind them but if you need to attack then you have that option if you need to secure a port like if you missed it uh, that can be a real problem so you're gonna have that ability uh, then recon company for movement and defense engineer company for digging in once you get there signal company for uh, getting that additional initiative so you're gonna be able to plan your attacks faster and get that attack buff again if you need to attack you have that extra damage then because it is crucial if paratroopers need to attack it's probably relatively dire because they are a get in secure and defend while the rest of the army comes in kind of troop that's what you should be using them as they should not be used as uh, their own force they are not going to be able to survive you if you're dropping them in and expecting them to destroy the enemy army you're messing up and I'm getting I'm getting away from myself uh, this is more more things that should be covered in a paratrooper tutorial, but I just needed to express that to my fullest ability quick. Uh, and then the logistics company. And so something that you might be concerned with uh, with dropping these guys in is if there's going to be tanks that are going to try to push you out right away. And that's a very real possibility uh, because if you are taking a critical area away from the enemy, they're probably going to want to kick you out right away. And so most likely you're going to want to put in anti-tank and what you're going to want to do is just take out the logistics company put in anti-tank and as far as priority if you cannot uh, get all these guys obviously it's top to bottom put these guys right here right after the uh, support artillery they're going to be your second support company so that 16 combat width is going to be based on an early game status for paratrooper drops uh, when you know infantry equipment and different things are quite limited and if you just want to make an early game uh, delivery so I would say before like 1940 maybe even 1941 uh, before that time you're going to want to use that 16 combat with just so you can have paratroopers available to you but if you plan on making a major paratrooper operation post that date I'd recommend upgrading to a 40 combat with division and the reason for that is going to be once you hit this point in the game your opponent's army is going to be relatively powerful they'll probably have tanks um, different things like that so they're going to be able to come at you and hit you hard once you start dropping uh, and Yes, you could build more 16 division combat with troopers, but here's the problem with that. It takes five divisions to fill an 80 with combat with. With this, it only takes two. So the difference being lies in the fact that 
the total number of divisions. You're going to need a lot more total divisions at a 16 width than at a 40 width. And the reason that's important is transport planes. You're going to want to drop in as many divisions, as many strong divisions as you can, as fast as you can. Paratroopers are the element of surprise. So if you're dropping in 116 combat width divisions, it's going to take quite a bit of time, quite a bit of planes, one or the other. Whereas instead, you could drop in 40 of these divisions and achieve the same amount of combat width effectiveness um, and only have to use 40 planes. It's just something to keep in mind. Now, I'm not saying it's a rule of thumb that you need to upgrade to this 40 combat width division as soon as you get to 1941. Um, you could still get away with a 16. Depends on what you're attacking and what your objective is. But keep in mind those statements and points I just made uh, versus the 40 to 16 when you go to make that decision for yourself. So now let's jump right into the Marines. So the Marines are going to have the standard 7x2 layout. Um, and what's really important about them why you use them instead of your typical infantry is their uh, amphibious attack. Uh, so when they're landing, um, they're going to get an additional 50% if it's just the Marines. Uh, so what we're seeing 55 right now is it's being affected by the artillery in a negative fashion. If I um, This combination right here, what I'm encircling, is only going to give a 30% uh, amphibious landing attack bonus, but the engineer company gives you an additional 25%. So we're going to have a 55% cumulative total of honor amphibious attacks. So that's going to affect these stats up here. Now with that being said, that kind of explains why I chose this as the number one support company to have. Uh, following that, we're going to have recon. Uh, that's going to be for speed and defense once you get there. Logistics is going to follow that for um, obviously logistical reasons. Field hospital because you're an infantry base template and then signal company so once you get there and you're attacking if you get bogged down you can use that signal company uh, initiative to get that attack buff and then push further forward so that's important to have there. Now it's important to note that this is an early game template again designed on saving uh, equipment expenses because your production capabilities are relatively limited in the beginning of the game. A later game stronger template would look something like this. So as you can see, we've jumped up to a 40 combat width division, um, 40 and not 44 because most likely you're going to want to be using your 10% combat mod with modifier commander somewhere else on your front line um, instead of just your marines. And the 40 combat width system we're seeing here is composed of 13 marines, 4 artillery, and 1 heavy tank. Again, you can use a medium tank instead. Um, you're going to see pretty similar results. Heavy tanks are just more reliable as far as they have higher armor and higher armor piercing. One thing I realized I forgot to mention with the smaller template of the Marines is if you wanted anti-tank because you are going to have to hold the beachhead and again just as with the paratroopers a lot of countries may or players may want to push you off right away with their armor division so in order to combat that what you can do is take a, the uh, support company tanks, replace that uh, of the field hospital, and then make that your first primor primary support company. Uh, they're going to be your highest priority then. Also, uh, as you can see with this division, we still have a relatively good amphibious attack buff just below the native 50%. If you're looking to bump this up to the 44 width, what I'd recommend doing is adding just two more uh, marine divisions right here. That's going to give you the full 50% attack buff. It's going to give you a bit more defense, a bit more, um, excuse me, organization and HP, uh, and just kind of make you a little bit more well-rounded uh, in in uh, in general. Uh, and then, as I said before, most times I'd recommend saving those commanders for your um, mainline front infantry. And I'm just gonna keep, I guess, saying that um, because that's where I feel and truly would recommend that they belong. Because that's gonna be your main force, and that's where you want that greatest buff. Uh, these are going to be tactical support, so if your main infantry is stalling and you see a initiative you can take where you swing around and capture a beachhead, start to push through, maybe swing in some of that infantry in your main forces, uh, maybe a tank division or so, and then can push and swing the tide of battle. That's what this is for. These are supporting uh, mechanisms for you to use tactically and swing the tide of battle. So this next division I'd like to show you is what I call a light infantry division, and it's going to be dependent on the mountaineer elite infantry type. Uh, so what you're going to be using these guys are with their small combat width and low supply usage is for moving through mountain and hill, hill terrain as well as exploiting supply issues for opposing divisions in low supply areas such as the Middle East, Africa, um, somewhat of Southeast Asia, uh, Northern, Northeast uh, Asia within the Soviet Union, different things like that. Those are areas of really low um, supply. So what you guys can do to use these guys very tactically is position them within mountainous and hillless regions 
Uh, hill is definitely isn't a word, but I'm gonna use it anyways. And really exploit that that buff they get with the attack, the defense, and movement speeds. Now these guys are very very target specific. If you're going to be using them, you're going to be using them uh, with a clear mindset and goal in mind, and you're going to also be wanting to micromanage them very heavily because they are not a standalone uh, line infantry. Once they move out into the plains uh, against, like, say, a, like a 7-2, like, regular line infantry, they're going to get wrecked. Fact. All right, so you're going to want to use them very strategically, very uh, purposefully, uh, and you're really going to want to keep an eye on them, make sure they're doing their thing uh, and kind of doing that whole thing so uh, support companies here we got you know this kind of all kind of really self-explanatory uh, the only thing I want to throw out like I always do is the anti-tank if you are concerned about it uh, even though you should be using them in areas where tanks are at a great disadvantage sometimes you still need that piercing value though to dispose of them and the way to accomplish that's going to be to use the support anti-tank company and you're going to replace that uh, with the signal company and it's going to be your second priority all right, so let's jump right into MP divisions. So this is a really uh, hot button, hot button issue with the HOI for community. Um, as far as what is the correct amount of cavalry to put in a um, MP division? So I've heard one, one to one, one MP uh, support uh, equipment to one cavalry. Um, I've heard four to one, three to one. I've heard pretty much everything. Uh, five, six. And what I've kind of looked at, kind of studying resistance and different numbers like that, I've really been looking into it because I wanted to figure this question out for myself. Uh, so what I've come up with for a, like, when you're in the middle of the war, uh, later game, like maybe 1941 to 1945, that range, um, four cavalry with one MP seems to be the good number for that and what this is going to do is by the time you get into that point you're going to be getting between 10 and a half to a maximum of 12 suppression from that four cavalry depending on what your mp buff is at based on research through the support company screen and i found that can quell most um districts or states i should use the term states it's the correct term most states with uh cities in them so like if you have, I, I don't know, even some of the smaller states, it's really interesting how the numbers work out. So like if you go in and we just like kind of take a glance at like France right now. So every city uh, creates its own amount of resistance. So if you have two cities within a state, you're going to have more to worry about. If you only have, um, if you only have one, you're going to have a little less to worry about. But I found four can take care of the two, uh, a lot of the twos, um, but it's not like, an overuse uh, for if you have a one or if you have like a none um, it's quite useful in that regard but then you run into a few hitches so like if you get into some more remote areas um, that don't really have any cities like I don't know yeah, this doesn't have any cities here and like say you've quelled the resistance to some of the near neighboring territories or states uh, that have cities with like a like a four cavalry suppression system here you can get away with having a smaller um, unit and that's where I've brought into the fold three different types of MP so you're gonna have your generic uh, MP division and this is what you're gonna want to use through most of Europe uh, just as your generic one and then what I recommend doing is actually cutting that and then dropping this down to just one cavalry and using this as a form of um, like a booster okay so what you're gonna do is say you have the generic one out there okay and you have 12 suppression but you need 14 to make it go all the way down so there's no resistance well you can take one of these little guys move them in tactically and set him up there and then he's going to negate that so what this comes down to with this level of MP management is you are trying to get as little resistance as possible and you're going to micromanage it and you're going to be manually moving around all these different things um, just be aware of the commitment that it requires when you're using this kind of strategy and then the third division type that I would uh, recommend using is the X amounts of cavalry division and uh, it kind of even makes me laugh because it's so unspecific but basically what that means is you're going to use as many cavalry as is required for a specific target so 
Like, um, for example, if you're Germany, you know there are certain cities you're going to be taking. Okay, so you're going to need a certain amount of suppression in order to suppress the cities. I've actually gone a little overboard here. Um, but for example, like the biggest thing Germany needs to suppress on their conquests is Paris. Because uh, Paris is a massive city. Um, uh, if we look at it, you know, it's right here, it's huge. Uh, it's its own state, uh, Paris. So Paris gives 5% uh, buff. Like to get that in comparison. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. This is uh, I gotta save this because I want I want to do this. This is gonna be my Thursday tip. We're gonna look at a in-depth overlay of how the hack resistance works because it is relatively complicated. Um, so I really am excited to lay that out. But anyway, just take my word. It's five percent, uh, which is quite hefty. And for example, then you're gonna want to use like a nine cavalry um, impede vision just to get that extra suppression for that that particular state. So. And then there's just other ones you can look at, and this is going to require some learning. We'll look more into detail on the actual numbers uh, during our resistance video on Thursday, and I'll give uh, some specific, this is the number you want um, for these certain cities in that video, um, but unfortunately I don't have them for you today, but that's just something to keep up, and that's my three-step approach to uh, MP divisions. So now this is my last division to show you guys. This is my Port Garrison Infantry Division. And what these are specifically de designed to do is to put, be placed right on a port manually and to hold that port against naval invasions. So one, troops can't uh, land at that port, and two, if troops land near it, they're not going to be able to capture the port in order to get supplies and additional troops in. So they're going to be designed to hold that. And so for if you're fighting the AI, that's what I have a pull up right away here, is you only need to do... 10 infantry divisions get at 20 combat width and use an engineer company. If you want to be particularly safe, you can go ahead and throw in the support anti tank, though it is mostly unnecessary and highly unlikely that it'll actually make a difference. The AI naval invasions are still, even with the patch, uh, quite poor. So, now if we're going to take a look at a multiplayer based port garrison, it's a bit more intensive because players are a lot smarter at naval invading they're gonna come at you with a lot harder unit uh, and all it, <laughs> all it really consists of for improving your defense is spamming more infantry making your template quite a bit stronger um, so you're gonna be looking at using a 40 width combat template um, with your anti-tank for sure you're gonna want anti-tank uh, if you want better piercing values if you're concerned about it what you're gonna do is just drop that guy here and switch this to an anti-tank right in the line um, your decision and you can actually even add in, in a second one and still fit within 40 width if you just want that a little bit even further extra piercing and heart attack you definitely have that option to you but that second one is not always necessary now how you're going to want to use this uh, specifically is you're going to want to use the 40 width ones or maybe even two 40 width ones to use to defend like major ports like ports you think are going to be attacked so uh, an example of this would be if you were, um, say, Russia, and you thought you are going to be invaded by the U.S. For whatever hypothetical reason, you only have two ports uh, for them to land at. Excuse me if I'm forgetting any. No. Oh, did I? Okay, that doesn't count. That's a different island. Anyway, you have two ports. <laughs> you have two ports that they can land at. And... Um, you could station 80 here, 80 there, 80 widths I'm talking about, so two divisions each of that 40 width template, uh, and then you're, you're golden. Um, if you look over here, maybe you're going to want to put, uh, say your Germany, maybe you want to put a 140 width or maybe even 240 widths in your uh, naval base here, like the larger ones, so the ones that are going to be able to bring in greater amounts of supply, because those are the last ones you want to lose, um, because if you lose those, they're going to be the greatest opportunity for your opponent to bring in large and larger numbers of divisions. So maybe, you know, have 80 combat with a defense here. Um, if we look at Hamburg, it's only one, so maybe only 20 with here. Um, another 80 here. And then, you know, just judge on the importance of the port uh, as to which garrison you put there. So you don't have to build entirely 40 width. 40 width would be the max. If you want to take a step down, then you go down to the 20 width. And if you want to take a step down from that, then you could go with the 10 width. 
and so you don't have to build straight 40 woods if you're playing multiplayer. Um, you could use the 40 woods to defend the important naval bases, and then use like 20 widths to defend the lesser naval bases, um, and then just kind of judge that. But anyway, you're going to want to have that infantry, and then either throw that AT line in, uh, line AT in there, or the support company AT. Personally, I like using the support AT because it lets me keep more infantry for more defense and hit points on the actual division itself. And then as far as, like I said, as far as using them, you station them in the port based on priority, and they just sit and hold it. And if the enemy lands surrounding the port, what you do is you swing in some kind of reactionary force, maybe even have them on standby if you think there's a high probability that the enemy's going to naval invade in a certain area, just like the uh, Germans tried to do when the Allies invaded Normandy, but basically uh, do it correctly so you have maybe some tanks stationed nearby. A, they come in, they land near your port, your infantry is holding out but they're getting surrounded, but all of a sudden you have um, your tanks come in and smash them off away from the port, destroying over the run those divisions, and that port garrison did its job. It prevented supply from being brought in to feed the advancing troops that just landed on the beaches surrounding the port. Alright guys, that's going to do it for my division tips video here. Um, these divisions are going to be pretty darn near the top dog. Feel very comfortable to use them in multiplayer. They should hold up uh, quite swimmingly, especially the infantry tank divisions. And then uh, hopefully my tips as far as the elite infantry and some of the different little variants um, I've given you can give you an edge not only versus the AI but again in multiplayer. If you enjoyed this video or if it helped you please leave a like. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you're new here. I do lots of different things with Arts of Ryan 4. Uh, lots of helpful stuff. Love interacting with you guys. And now with that being said I'm going to get this video over with and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one and as always guys thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.